There's 13 in this bunch, um, so three more went out there last weekend. Uh, they're all together. And I will be honest with you, I was worried about three of them. Three of them. Manure was getting kind of watery. I noticed they weren't thriving that terribly well. Um, and I noticed they weren't eating very much meal, three of them especially. Um, and I just, I rung the vet actually, and I was going to actually put them in and treat them. I thought maybe first they had worms, but they weren't out long enough to have worms. So the vet just instantly told me on the phone, it's happening everywhere. And um, calves are doing very, very badly because just down to wet grass, that's what it was down to. The way I could have solved it probably was to put some hay or straw or something like that in with them. A bit of dry matter just to dry themselves up a wee bit. But thankfully the weather has improved. The rain has stopped. Although it's still wet the ground in places, the rain has stopped and the calves are now thriving again. I'm um, glad to see it because I was worried about them. I like to see the calves doing well because this is the most important time for them. Anyway, they have that grass well at down there. This little bit up here has grown a lot again. This is the first place they would have went. We're going to just let them up here. I'm going to throw the trots onto the rack of the quad and just bring them up here as well and just drop them here beside the gate. A little bit handier when we're feeding them from the tips of the bin over there. You can see there's a silage ground behind you. It's a good crop of stuff on it. Um, it should be a nice pit of stuff. Um, just in places it has started to seed, I'd rather not see that. But that's what you get. Nitrogen was in it a long time now. Just the growth wasn't there. The growth's there now. It's growing very, very quickly. Um, so hopefully it'll be knocked down in the pit in the next couple of days. I have one calf that keeps throwing the trot over. You can see the male on the ground. I know the one that's doing it because I've seen it doing it on the camera last night. And um, we have a 360, well, it's not a 360, it's a PTZ camera that Stephen fitted for us um, there a few days ago. But it's on the shed and I can turn it around and I was able to see the calves. And I watched them for about half an hour after, just after I fed them yesterday. And 914, you are the girl that's doing it. Put the head clean under the trot and just flicked it up. Yeah, and there goes the male all over the ground. Lovely. Get them fed and out of here. Right, just get another one of them buckets and that'll be them fed for the day. So we sold um, three of our heifers. It's something I don't like doing. It's something I hated doing. I ended up selling two of which would have been the best nearly heifers among them. And the other one would have been the youngest. Um, but we had to sell them. Um, we have a problem with angleberries. Um, we never had that problem before. We normally had warts on heifers quarters and things when they go to calve. We normally get through that. You might lose a heifer once every two years. You'd have to sell her on because you couldn't make her. But these are angleberries. These were big tumours. Basically all around their elder region. Um, hanging from the end of the teats as well. It was just a mess. Knew that they could never be milked. They were just all deformed because of it. So I had to sell off three of the heifers because I just knew by looking at them, they were that badly deformed. There was no way they were going to be ever be able to be milked. One of the which might, um, the guy that bought them um, said he's going to chance them. He's going to put on sheep bands and things on them to see will some of them come off. Then of course they'll be milked. 
but I just didn't want the hassle because I've seen that before. I've seen myself rooting at them and rooting at them and putting them in and doing them every day with ointments and different things and to no benefit. So I didn't have the time to be at that. So we're less three heifers. It's a horrible thing to have to do. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things. So at the minute, I'm out rolling uh, the fields after the cows. You don't have to be farmers to know the bit of rain that fell. So fields were starting to get cut up. This field in particular got a real bad doing. So um, every bit of it needs to be rolled. I don't die about rolling fields. I think I said that before. It's not something I'm overly keen on doing. But that's a wet spot there. Yeah, you hit the hot, buy it up. Uh, we can have a look at that in a minute. Although it might make paddocks look good, it's adding to compaction. And the last thing you want is compaction, basically, because because the soil can't breed, it just adds to the problem. So, so we're just off the tractor here now. And we get a better look at what's actually going on. So this is a corner of this silage field that I have here. Now I call it silage field. This is a field we used to all us cut silage on. At home we actually used to cut silage in this in here as well. And this corner has got very wet. It's got very wet this last two years and I ignored it last year. Um, but this year I'm going to have to do something with it. So you can see as I'm just after finishing rolling the rest of it. You can see how wet it is here. There's actually water laying on top of it. So that's a show that is definitely busted there. Um, over here just a small bit as well you run into the same problems. So you can see the way I'm sinking in here. You can see how wet that is. It's very, very wet. And over here is the same. There's water actually laying on top of the ground. Now the ground should have soaked up an awful lot by now, but here never soaks up. It's just too much water laying in them shores. You can see there, that's absolutely sobbing wet again. Um, so there's a shore busted there. So to fix that, I need to pull a shore above it, bring it across and run into that drain over there. Not a big job. It drains there right beside it, so it's not going to be a hard job to fix. Now, if we go further over there to that far corner, we have the same issue. We have a boil up there as well. Um, just water literally coming up out of the ground and soaking the field. So, not a hard job to fix. Jerry will run that drain in an hour. In this part of the country here in Cavan, where I am, um, land isn't really free drain and you have to keep on top of it. You've got an awful depth of soil around here, which is great. Great land for growing grass but you do have to keep it maintained. You do have to keep your shores and things running and make sure you don't have any bile ups. Um, the big hill as we caught up where we cut our silage, that's the one we removed the tree out of the middle of it, full of them. It's actually full of bile ups. Um, couldn't believe it when we were putting out the slurry of the year, there was so many wet spots in it. It seems to be getting really bad this last three years. So I'm gonna have to address that. That's a much bigger job. But that land away from home has stone shores riddled with good clean stone shores you wouldn't dig 30 foot before you'd hit a stone shore so my idea would be to actually mow plow it um, my father swears by mow plowing we have a field that's above this one here um, which was mow plowed back 30 years ago and it's the driest field we call it the mow drain field it's the driest field we have now when i say mow plow i'm just talking about putting a mow plow on the back of the tractor not the other way not with the bulldozer and filling it full of stone i know that is a seriously good job but it's also a seriously expensive job and it's just not something that's practical to do an awful big area not for us at the moment um so a mow plow just let that water into them stone shores would that be a good job let us know in the comment section below because it's something i'm seriously thinking about doing in the future either buying a mow plow for myself or getting a contractor in to run some of the fields including this one and um, that has shores in it it's just the water has to get back into them right so i got a call last night that um they had a problem with the case uh, the case wouldn't split that's something i wasn't expecting but it would not split so on up last night and yep it wouldn't there was three of us at it and it would not come apart I'm just on my way up to it here now to have a quick look at it and um yeah we'll take it from there and here she is the lady herself she looks in a sorry little state now at the minute, so she does. We got her split in the end, but it was a task. It was took three of us, and we were a long, long time at it. He was two nights at it, in fact, trying to get her to come apart. And she just fought and fought, and she wouldn't come apart. But there was a reason for that. And that reason in here was this. And it was not very bright in here. I'm hoping you can see. But you see the middle wear that's in that? That shouldn't be like that. And that was holding on to it and not allowing it to open. We also have a leak there, but that's the reason why she wouldn't come apart. The clutch itself we haven't out of it yet. As I say last night, we just literally got it pulled apart and then we left it. She's apart, that's the main thing. Uh, it's the first step in getting her fixed. One thing we will be doing will be, we'll be opening up that PTO 
inside. We'll be going through the torque unit as well and checking and see what needs to be replaced. But for now, that is going to have to be replaced. I'm not sure if that shaft runs the whole way to the back or not. Pull it all out and have a look at the PTO and everything and just make sure all of that's good inside and anything that needs to be replaced we're going to replace. You always had a little oil leak coming out of the tractor and this was coming out of there so there was oil seeping out of that the whole time. We have our new clutch pack here in here sitting from Conity so that will be going into it, it's a brand new complete clutch pack. We have a new clutch pack here ready to go into it all brand new. We have a new release bearing as well so a few bits and pieces will be going into it and um, we also have this a back end filter as well, we're going to put that into it. We meant to do that when we were doing the loader. So we put a new hydraulic back end filter into that as well. It probably didn't split because it wasn't used to being split. See, case tractors are hard to split. They're known to be hard to split because they're not split too often. See, if that was a John Deere now. Yeah. So that's all. We leave it at that. We let him work away at it. And I'll come back and give you another update maybe in a few days time. She's looking in a sorry old state, but she'll be much better when she comes home. And just before we finish off today's video, you can see what's going on in the background. You can see Ivan over there, and we're the field half mode, so silage is a go. That'll be picked up in the next few videos. Folks, if you want to see more of all the silage and the tractor coming back and everything that's going to be happening now in the next couple of weeks, don't forget, hit that sub button, give us a like, throw the old comment down below. We'll do our best to get back to them as always. And until the next one, talk to you again. Now, Rain, you stay away.